I'm Harvey Smith, the creative director of Dishonored 2. So, the first Dishonored left off at a very interesting note. Where does Dishonored 2 pick up with that story? Uh, Dishonored 2 happens 15 years after the Rat Plague. Young Emily Caldwin is back on the throne. She's grown up under the protection of the royal protector, her father, Corvo Watano, the hero from the first game. And uh, at the start of Dishonored 2, there's a coup, and uh, you either play Emily Caldwin or Corvo Watano each with their own supernatural powers and their own uh, assassination and combat animations, each voiced by a different voice actor and different perspective. What was the mentality of making Emily a playable character in this one? At the end of Dishonored 1, uh, for some reason the burning thought that we had was how interesting it would be to advance 15 years and have Emily be the hero this time. Uh, what would this little girl be like, you know, who had this terrible tragedy mar her life? Uh, like if she was, you know, out in the world as an empress, uh, dethroned and on the run. Now, what are some of the changes that are in Dishonored 2 that makes it stand out from Dishonored 1? Yeah, Dishonored 2 really is the bigger, better version of Dishonored. Like, uh, everything that was there in the first game that you loved is enhanced, made deeper, uh, a little better. You know, from the sword fighting to the stealth, uh, all of Corvo's powers from the first game are back, but they're all extended with these upgrade trees under them. Emily is a new player character. She has uh, a bunch of her own brand new game mechanics, supernatural powers that can all be uh, upgraded with little trees under them as well. Uh, we have bone charm crafting this time. We have a full playthrough you can do with no powers. You can say no to the outsider. Uh, the levels are bigger. They're all themed in some epic way, like uh, today we've been showing off the Clockwork Mansion where you can reconfigure the walls, floor, and ceiling of the house like a Rubik's Cube. Uh, each of the missions has something either fictionally or mechanically like that. Uh, it's just really the bigger, better version of Dishonored. What are the motivations that are driving both Corvo and Emily? Yeah, for Emily, she's lost her throne and she's on the run. She's kicked out of the palace, basically. She's on the run down in the south. And she's trying to win back the throne. You know, take back what's yours is her main thought. Uh, but also she's seeing the world outside the palace for the first time. She's seeing the impact of her leadership. Uh, for Corvo, uh, his daughter is under jeopardy one more time. He's aging, he's in his mid-50s. He's like, how long can I protect her? Uh, he's having to go home because he's from Sirkonos, actually, originally. So he's back in his home city seeing how it's changed. Uh, you know, kind of a one more time, world weary uh, character. What were some of the lessons that you folks learned from Dishonored that you're implementing into Dishonored 2? You know, we, sequeling Dishonored uh, for Dishonored 2, we brought back all the, the big important core features that people liked in the first game. We added a, new, a number of new features like Emily Caldwin with new powers and the no powers playthrough and bone charm crafting and a bunch of stuff like that non-lethal moves for uh, almost all the combat moves. But then we also took a list of four or five things that even people who loved the first game said they thought could be better and we tried to redress all of those. And finally, when is the game coming out? Uh, Dishonored 2 will be available everywhere on 11-11-16. Unless you pre-order, then you get to play a day early.